Hello, my name is Richard Curran. Um, I just want to start by asking a question. How many of you here in the room have been to university? I suspect quite a lot of you are in university, but how many have been and finished and gone on to do other things? Okay, how many of you have ever spent any time thinking about what your life would have been like if you had never gone to university? I want you to imagine that right now just for a second, because I know that I think about it a lot. Imagine um, all of the people that you have met in university, through university, and the opportunities and experiences that university opened up to you. So they might be gone. Imagine the job that you might have. Perhaps you wouldn't have a job. Perhaps you don't have a job now. But that would probably be gone. Imagine all the places and remember all the places that you have been to while you were in college or after university when you could afford to go there on holidays. They might well be gone. And now think of all the things you learned, not just the formal education while you were in university, but what it opened up in teaching you how to learn and in the workplace and in your life experience. The university changes us. It can actually transform our lives. One of the reasons for that is the things that it gives us, the experiences that we have and the learning and education that we get is something that can never be undone or taken away. Think about it. You can lose your job. Many people have. You can lose your money. Things come along, Anglo-Irish bank shares, two-bed apartments in Balgriffin, Bulgaria, whatever it is, your money's gone. But you can never lose the benefits of the experiences and education that you've got. That is something that shapes you and that passes on to your children and your children's children, irrespective of whether they ever go to university or not. So therefore, we're incredibly lucky. And we're lucky, you know, in one sense, but we deserve it, don't we? We deserve it because we're the smartest people in the country, aren't we? We did the best in our leaving, sir, to get to university, which proves we must be the smartest people in the country. Doesn't it? Does it? If I'm right and university can actually transform lives, but not everybody can go, because there's limited places, then surely everybody deserves an equal shot at getting in but not everybody gets an equal shot at getting in. Kids from socially disadvantaged uh, areas, from lower socioeconomic uh, groups and income groups, are not making it through to university in sufficient numbers. In 1996, the previous Fine Gael Labour government abolished third level education fees in what was expected to be a panacea, a complete change that would open up university education for people of all backgrounds. It failed. One of the reasons it failed was it ended up creating a much bigger demand for a limited supply of university places, while at the same time reversing the one advantage that low-income families had over high-income families. Yes, there were lots of families that were just above the grant threshold that were then able to send their kids to university, and that was a wonderful thing. But they could have just increased the grant threshold and done the same thing. So when you think about it, I'm not saying that you know, university is the exclusive preserve of the financial elite. That's not true, it isn't. But it is the disproportionate preserve of the better off. And there are lots of figures and statistics bandied around about things. Last week there were newspaper headlines which said that of the 100 top feeder schools for uh, third level colleges in Ireland, 70 of them were non-fee paying schools. That was very good. It suggested that state public schools are doing really well. Some of them are very good in sending lots of people to college. But a closer look at the figures shows that for high points courses in universities, teacher training colleges and Royal College of Surgeons, the feeder schools for those courses is almost exclusively dominated by fee-paying schools. The top nine feeder schools for those courses are fee-paying schools. 17 of the top 100 feeder schools are in South Dublin and 14 of the 17 are fee-paying. Now, of course, the explosion in education institutes in Ireland and more third-level places over the last 10 or 15 years has been a really, really great thing. And it has opened up education and higher education to a lot of people. So much so that one in three uh, children of traditional working-class, semi-skilled or unskilled parents goes to third-level education. But two-thirds don't. And if you look at university places in particular, the figures are a lot lower. There's even some evidence to suggest that at the top of the education tree, the situation may be getting worse. In the academic year 
Almost 50% of the people going into university were the children of professionals, employers, or managers. The figure was up on the previous year. The children of traditional working class, unskilled parents accounted for 1.6%, and the figure was down on the previous year. I came from a family of seven children. We would have been what were traditionally, I suppose, regarded by the sociologists as a lower socioeconomic bracket. Neither of my parents went to secondary school, but along the way, they developed a really keen interest in education, and they were utterly determined that it would be there for their children or any of their children who really wanted it. So I went to university. Two of my brothers went to university, and one of my sisters went to university. We were able to do that because we qualified for full local authority grants at the time. Without them, it never would have happened. Today, the four of us have 10 university degrees between us. It took a while, but we got there. <laughs> now, if you look at how um, education has formed and how it has developed, I think back to when I first went to Trinity College as an undergraduate uh, in the 1980s, and I was absolutely shocked at the extent to which so many people there had come from a shared background. So many of them shared the same interests, so many of them shared the same ideas and points of view. In fact, it seemed to me that quite a lot of them had known each other before they'd even got there. I know what education and university has done for me and for my family, and the effects that that will hopefully have on my children and my nephews and nieces. In a way, it changed the family narrative for the better. And it did it in a way that can never be reversed and never be lost, no matter what happens from now on. But universities and opening up of universities to as many people from as many social backgrounds as possible is a vitally important challenge for teachers, for government, for schools, for parents, and for universities themselves. In this country, we are coming out of an enormous financial shock. We're trying to deal with it. We're looking at who's to blame. We're blaming the central bank, the government, bankers, developers, the whole lot. And in a way, they all share a part of the blame. But at its core was a consensus that was built up during the boom. And the consensus of the educated elite did not allow enough room for disparate perspectives and points of view, challenge, and alternative analysis. In a country as small as ours, we have to cultivate and seek out different perspectives. Where do different perspectives come from? They come from a combination of the life experience of the person who holds it, combined with the educational tools to develop and articulate it. The educated middle classes in Ireland love consensus because it protects their interests. The highly educated upper middle classes in Ireland have turned agreeing with each other into an art form. Universities have a vital role in trying to attract as many people from as many different social backgrounds as possible. Not just because of equality, not just because of fairness, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because universities themselves will benefit. They will produce more enlightened graduates, and we will all be better off. Thank you very much.